Zelda Breath of the Wild is for me one of the best learning content to dig into for art. Breath of the Wild art is incredible. It's not only beautiful, it's extremely optimized. And I think this is the craziest thing about this game. In general, you have to make graphic sac sacrifices in order to get something optimized. But Breath of the Wild team push both graphics and optimization at an excellent level. Very beautiful visuals, running with surprisingly strong performance. When you make a game, the ratio graphics performance tends to one or another. The more you push in performance to get things optimized, the more you need to sacrifice art. In reverse, the more you push graphics, the more performance you lose. That's not the case with Breath of the Wild. We have here an outstanding graphics and optimization ratio. I know the game has some low poly assets, low resolution texture, short LOD distances, but if you look globally and not at individual assets, if you look at lightning and rendering features, the game looks gorgeous. And I can spoil you here, a lot of rendering techniques used in the game are triple A features faked to save massive performance for the GPU. Triple A rendering with cheap price. This is the genius of the developer team behind Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you are a game developer, this should be something very interesting to study or at least to look at. For myself, I discovered this game first at, as a gamer. I enjoyed the game with player eyes and I didn't look at how art was made and optimized. Then I became a game developer, working on a stylized touch game. So I quickly thought about taking a look at Zelda Breast of the Wild for inspiration. I was a beginner, I didn't do any art school or game development school. So I wandered in the game, checking how they did this and how they did that, and I quickly realized something huge. I had in front of me something absolutely incredible in terms of development learning content. The more I was learning game dev, the more I was realizing Zelda Breath of the Wild was insane, the more I was analyzing the game and the more I was discovering crazy interesting things. Super smart rendering techniques, very efficient optimization choices. The game was surrounded by cleverness. So this is why today I say it loud, the study of Zelda Breath of the Wild from A to Z, going deeply through artistic duration, di direction, level design, technical art and optimization is for me a huge gold mine that can teach you tons of stuff about art in game development and help your own game. I'm going to explain you why this is the best school, in my opinion, and why all of those things are amazing in Breath of the Wild. Let's start with art direction. Let's ask a question many people wonder. What do you need to make a game look good? How can you achieve beautiful graphics? Zelda can teach you a lot about it. It just depends on how deep you can look at the game. Let's talk about details balance in Zelda Breath of the Wild as a first example. Here in Zelda Breath of the Wild, Nintendo put a lot of details on specific assets, part of the world, and very few on others. And this is already very interesting. In general, the rule in order to have a coherent, a coherent world sorry, is to have consistent level of details everywhere. If your trees are realistic, your bushes need to be realistic as well. But the artistic direction of Breath of the Wild kind of mixed different art style together. Let me explain. You have standard stylized, you have cell shaded, and you, you have realistic. Yes, there are realistic stuff in Breath of the Wild, and I will show you this later. But as a player, I always had this image of Breath of the Wild graphics as cartoon, 
details free, very stylized, but I was wrong. There are a lot more details in the game that you imagine. Go back to the game and look specifically for details. You will be surprised that there are a lot more details. But first, let's remind stylized art style and details level are two completely different things. You can have a stylized game with a lot of details actually. And that's surprisingly the case with Breath of the Wild on specific part of the world, for example, ground textures. They can have a lot of details. Some of them are even literally realistic textures. If you don't believe me, please look at that. What is it to you? Isn't this texture super realistic? It's like they took a realistic texture, maybe a picture in the forest, I don't know, as they just blur it in Photoshop to kind of make it a little bit more stylized, but it's still super realistic. But it's here, in the middle of nowhere, and I'm sure nobody no noticed this. But it fits perfectly well to the environment. How interesting this choice is! This is really surprising and open a door for a lot of questioning. In reverse, vegetation foliage has almost inexistent details. The leaves are blurry, very low resolution, almost no details. But in the other side, rocks and cliffs have a lot of details, certainly more than what you can remember. But going back to characters, they have almost inexistent details due to the cell shaded rendering. So if you come up to an artist with this mixed, most of the time he's going to tell you it's not gonna work. And I admit I would have thought the same, but you know the rest of the story, the game is gorgeous. All of these ingredients fit surprisingly well together and make Zelda Breath of the Wild looks one of the most beautiful stylized game out there. I think everyone agrees with this. To give perspective to this fact, a game like Sea of Thieves, which is beautiful, has a completely consistent level of details everywhere, making the environment homogeneous, not sure about the pronunciation of this one. And this is actually what we are taught to. This teaches us we can make something beautiful even if we break the rules of the industry. Now, an interesting question would be why Zelda team put a lot more details on rocks and grounds and not on other parts? Think about it, question yourself. I have my own ideas. If anyone has interesting answers, please share them. It would be a very interesting talk. Here, another interesting choice to dig into, the cell shading effect. The 3D models are middle poly in the game. Zelda Link, Link model is around 12,000 trees, which is already pretty, pretty a lot of trees, um, especially for a character that needs to be animated and it's pretty heavy for performance, on performance, sorry. Why? I mean, if you have a cell shader, you don't need that much trees as the cell shading effect will smooth the skin and remove details. So, okay, you can say, it's okay, they just did it, nothing smart behind. Yeah, this certainly just raised the polygons as the switch is more powerful. But what if not? If that's not the case, there are, there is a, a clever reason behind this choice and it needs to be discovered yet, right? This is the kind of spirit I want to share today and this is the kind of spirit that makes you learn a lot more than just scratching the surface, the surface of things. And this spirit associated with a game like Zelda Breath of the Wild that is rich, the combination of this can teach you so much. That's exactly what it means to dig into this game and use it as a learning material, as a school, analyzing and questioning. And if you do that, trust me, your skills will skyrocket, as I did. It's even more relevant and interesting that the process comes from you. When you are at school, the teacher takes all his stuff 
and put them in your ears with a funnel and make sure everything comes in. But this doesn't come from you, right? True, you register to the class, sit to learn, uh, but the information itself given, you didn't look for them specifically. For example, like you didn't think like, okay, I want to, to learn how to make uh, ripples on water and then here is the teacher precisely explain it most of the time this is not the case so you try to digest a lot of information you weren't ready to and because you don't have any direct utility on your daily activity for example a side project it's going to be a lot more difficult to digest get it and remember it but going around Zelda Breath of the Wild and look around as a Sherlock Holmes, uh, going after interesting stuff, you will automatically be led by things that interest and attract you. What a fun, cheap and effective way to learn. And it's even more relevant that this is coming from you. It's changed everything. You will learn so much and and it will be so light. I mean, the, the learning process won't be painful and heavy. Let me keep going with the other extremely interesting part when we talk about the genius behind Breath of the Wild. This is technical art. I mean here, all programming behind art and art effects. This side has even more things to teach you. Nintendo is huge in that they are so good at optimization and do you know why they're so good at it because they're working under limitation and constraints they are always working on limiting hardware so listen to this it's when you are under limits that you excel when you have small budgets i mean here in terms of performance you have to double the effort for finding clever techniques in order to have expensive looking art features on small hardware. I'm not saying it's good to do this, as it can always be frustrating to be limited in your art and your work possibilities in general. The Nintendo Switch is quite limited in terms of GPU power indeed. But Nintendo, after years and years, almost decades of low hardware game development, titles after titles, they excelled and overcome their aptitude for optimization, making them maybe the best big company for optimization out there. And I don't take many risks to say this, at least for Zelda Breath of the Wild team and Mario Dev Team 2, they really did a lot, with very few, by using smart techniques, tricks, ingenuity, and Breath of the Wild today is for me the best example about it. It's floated by optimization. There are so much to discover about the technicity behind this title. I already made a video about grass, not very sexy topic, but I studied Zelda Breast of the Wild grass and took a look how the art team tackled this very important aspect of the game. And I found so many things and I even didn't say everything in the video I have made. I suggest you to watch it. Just by looking at the grass, you can already learn so much about optimization. And I'm not just talking about LOD or basic stuff. It's very interesting and, and can already bring you so much to your own game. Imagine now digging into the water, the terrain system, the blending system, lightning, it's so rich, it's brilliant. Don't worry, I have already planned to tackle all these big rendering features, super optimized in future videos. Um, this will be a big breakdown of all cleverness of Nintendo Technical Art Team. It's fascinating, it's, it's really juicy stuff. I'll try to make it as easy to understand as possible for people not comfortable with technical terms of game development, so don't worry. The thing is, I think it's, it's very, very, very important to spend a decent amount of time to learn optimization. I see too many artists, I try to say this with humility because we cannot be good at everything, you know? But too many artists today don't pay attention to optimization, or not enough, and, and ship assets on stores 
tutorials, courses with scenes that are impossible to play because of the poor FPS. I remember buying a course not so long time ago, I was running the example scene at 12 FPS. Not a single optimization work was made for, for the foliage. I don't blame them, but we have to remember game art is meant to be used in games. So there is no point making a 5000 trees plants if nobody is going to use it at the end. I've seen jewels in terms of visual beauty and in the other side disasters in terms of optimization. It kind of breaks my heart because the artist behind certainly puts a lot of passion in their work. But yeah, this is not game art, it's 3D art. Because no engine will be able to run them. That is why Breath of the Wild is your best friend for improving your optimization skills. A complete video game artist knows how to put beauty and optimization together. So even if you're working hard on assets, trying to make something beautiful, you know, don't lose the thing that it's useless to spend five hours on an asset if at the end it will be not game compatible. So why I'm doing this video? I'm making this video to introduce a series of video that will make a breakdown of all features behind one of the best game in the industry. And I think this can be very juicy material in order to help you in your game development. Because for me, they are the best. They are one of the best. I mean, Zelda Breath of the Wild gave up the game development team. I'm going to dissect the game on art direction, on level design and on technical art. Especially the two last parts, as our direction is more likely subjective. I didn't mention level design today, but this part is amazing as well in Breath of the Wild. It will be covered for sure. So many things to say. So this is it. Uh, it's a pretty long video, my apologize, but I really enjoyed making it. I think this is really interesting things to talk about, so please share your, your opinions about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to see you soon for our next video. Uh, where I'm going to dissect Breath of the Wild again and really take the best in order to improve our games. See you soon. Bye-bye.